What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today I'm going to show you how you can get more detail out of dark images by using a combination of HDR toning and sharpening effects in Photoshop. Alright guys, so let's get going here. I'm going to show you today how you can get more detail out of an image and this will work especially well with any images that have dark areas you know jackets hair or in this case you know a helmet um, so there's a lot more information here in this image that we can that we can pull out so let's get started first thing I'm gonna do is press command J to make a copy of this layer and then hold down the control key and click on the copy and choose convert to smart object all right, from there we're going to come up to Image, Adjustments, HDR Toning. And this is going to then prompt you with a box that says HDR Toning will flatten the document. Do you want to proceed? And we're just going to go ahead and hit Yes. Now, uh, once you do that, you'll see you have a list of presets here that you can go through and you know try out some different ones. I'm going to choose Surrealistic High Contrast. All right, and you can come in here and kind of uh, you know play around with the the radius and the different settings that you have, and just kind of see you know what it does to your image. You know it can you know really bring out a lot of the the fine textures and the skin and things like that. Um, but you have so much more control over the uh, the highlights, the vibrance, and the exposure of your image. All right, I don't know if I want the strength to be quite that high, maybe somewhere around there. All right, and then for now, I know it still looks a bit, you know, overexposed and, and blown out, but we're just going to hit OK so that I can show you guys um, how this works. Once you've applied this, uh, we're going to actually save this because it is flat on our desktop, and I'm just going to call it, you know, 2. And it's OK if it's a uh, JPEG for now. OK, uh, once that's done saving, you can come up here to your history and then just click on the very top, and that's going to bring you back to your original image. Now we're going to save this one as one on our desktop and that will also be a JPEG which is fine alright so from here uh, go ahead and hit open check out your desktop and we're gonna open image 2 and we're gonna hold down the command and shift keys and drag it into our new document so that it drops it directly on top of the other layer now from here you can you know reduce the opacity of this and you can also um, you know, try the different blending modes to kind of see what, what's what here. Right, and I'm thinking maybe, you know, overlay or soft light will be pretty nice. I'm going to try overlay it around, you know, 50%. And that's already giving us, you know, some, some nicer color and uh, texture as well. So I'm going to select the background layer and press Command J one more time to make another copy of it. And I'm going to move it to the top of the layer's stack. From here, uh, hold down the control key again and make this a smart object. And then we will return to the image menu. And this time, we're going to select uh, sh Adjustments, Shadows, Highlights. All right, and this is another way that you can uh, pull information out of you know, a dark image. And you know, this technique works well by itself. So uh, I have a feeling that when we combine it with the HDR toning effect, it can be you know, even nicer. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm going to move the HDR effect on top and just kind of see, you know, where we're at here, how that looks on top of that image. All right, at 100 is, is pretty harsh, but, you know, you can, you can already see kind of uh, a lot of the detail that's, that's coming out here. And I'm using, uh, holding down the shift key and just using the plus and minus uh, keys to kind of scroll through the different blending modes here. And then just you know pressing the numbers on the keyboard to control the opacity by uh, by ten percent. All right. So uh, once you've done that, uh, I'm going to select uh, the top layer, which is our HDR toning layer, as well as the shadows and highlights layer, and put them into a group folder. So that way we can see the original and then see what we have now. All right, I'm going to merge those two layers together, or the whole group folder, just by selecting it and pressing Command E. And then we'll make one more copy, convert it to a smart object. And this time we're going to go to uh, Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. 
All right, and you'll see here um, when you have this preview window, clicking the hand will kind of show you what it looks like before and after. And it really, you know, really sharpens it a lot. I have the advanced settings checked off right now, so you can kind of, uh, you know, see what's happening. But I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And with these sliders, you know, you can control the radius, like how much it's affecting in the shadows and highlights individually, um, as well as your overall sharpening parameters. So I'm going to increase the radius a bit and also check off the more accurate uh, option here and then just hit OK. And the nice thing about this is too, you know, leaving it as a smart object, you can always come back and, and change some of the, the uh, settings afterwards. Okay, so now I'm going to select both of these top layers uh, by clicking them and holding the shift key and then uh, we're going to merge them. Okay, so obviously now I won't be able to go back and uh, adjust those parameters if I want to. So I'm going to undo that and put it into a group folder, a new group folder instead. Alright, and then we're going to make a copy of that folder and merge it. And you know, I like making copies of things and kind of working off copies so that I can always kind of revert as I go if I need to. But once I've done that, I'm just going to uh, merge these together and do a little bit of a blur because um, it's getting, you know, pretty grainy. But um, I'm going to merge that together, Command E, and come up here to, actually before I do that, make it a smart object again. Come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Just a little bit of a blur on here, maybe like 0.7 or something, you know? Just very subtle. Alright, and then as you can see, you know, the before and after, uh, the result of, of all the sharpening that we've just done, it's a little bit harsh, but I'm going to scroll through uh, some of these blending modes so that you guys can see uh, kind of how it looks layered on top. You know, we're going to find one, we're going to find one that we like here. Hard light, pin light, divide. Some of these, you know, can oftentimes produce some pretty unexpected results. And sometimes, you know, it's cool. Sometimes it looks, you know, kind of ridiculous. But in any event, um, you know, you can get something pretty interesting. All right. So now that I have that, I'm going to I'm probably just going to leave it on normal for now, and then just reduce the opacity to 50%. And what we're going to do from here is hold down the Alt Option key and choose Add Layer Mask. So what that does is fill the layer mask with black so that in order to uh, bring out the sharpened areas we are painting with white. Uh, normally we would be painting with black to hide areas but because we inverted it we're doing just the opposite. But I like doing this because you can kind of uh, bring in the sharpened areas and the highlights uh, gradually right? instead of doing the, the whole image at once. I'm just going to brighten up, you know, here and there, bring some detail out in the helmet because I don't want it to be, you know, covering our entire image. And if I hold down control and click on the layer mask, I can just do disable layer mask and you'll see, you know, what it looks like when the whole image is sharpened and then enabling the layer mask, how it looks in our selected areas. Okay, and then you can turn that on and off and just kind of see the before and after. So it definitely, you know, it has a nice effect. And if you guys want to push it even further, um, what you can do is add a new layer. Um, click the new layer icon while holding down Alt Option. And choose gray for the color, for the mode overlay. And then check off this box that says fill with overlay neutral color 50% gray. And now what you can do is using either a black or white brush at a low opacity. Um, this is going to have the you know a similar effect to a dodge and burn. So anywhere that you're using white, uh, you're going to pop out the highlights even more and anywhere that's using black you're going to be uh, basically emulating like a, a burn effect All right? and a little bit goes a long way here you don't want to go nuts with this um, but you know if you just kind of go over some of the shadow areas and some of the highlights a little bit more uh, it'll really give you some nice contrast alright what I like to do is kind of start with a larger brush and then come in something a little bit smaller and more fine and really get those highlights to jump out. You know, and try to follow, you know, the curve or the, the uh, 
the direction of whatever it is that you are uh, trying to make stand out or recede. And you'll see here, just turning that on and off, you know, the kind of effect that I'm talking about. So now if I put those two layers in a group folder, you can see our starting image and where we ended up. You know, it's pretty cool. So that's kind of a, you know, a technique that I like to use a lot in order to bring detail out of images um, while also sharpening them and making them a little bit more uh, compelling and, and interesting. You know, it really draws your eye in more uh, than this kind of like soft focus uh, type of look that we started with. So um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and help us out by giving us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you haven't signed up for the email list, go ahead and do that as well. Right now you can get a free copy of Essential Photoshop Tutorials, a starter guide sent directly to your inbox. So thanks again for watching, guys. See you next time.